What's going on, my friends? Sean Pierce Johnson here. Today, we are going to be taking a look at the beautiful television humbucker by Framus Guitars. <laughs> For me, GitCon 2017 was a milestone event in terms of my whole YouTube career, I guess we can call it. Uh, not only did my channel grow exponentially thanks to many of you guys subscribing, but I became aware of and exposed to brands of equipment that I hadn't been aware of before. The most important and biggest kind of aha moment came in the form of Framus Guitars. And the company is churning out some guitars that I am gonna go out on a limb and say rival the American counterparts. In the time that I have had this television in my possession, it's quickly become an instrument that, one, I don't want to give back to Framus, and is really starting to give my main Les Pauls a run for its money. So let's go ahead and go over the specs and talk about what you are going to expect when you open the box should you get your own television. First thing that we should touch on is this body shape. Now, Jazz Masters and Jaguars seem to be a sort of in thing right now, and the television definitely has a little bit of uh, an inspiration from that particular body style, but Rather than having more pointy edges and sharp edges, we have something a little bit more rounded. And I think it just kind of classes it up a little bit and makes it a little bit more of an elegant guitar. The body is mahogany. The neck is mahogany. It has a beautiful, beautiful flamed maple top and a nice burgundy red finish. And it's a semi-hollow. It's a semi-hollow offset, pretty cool. Something that you don't typically see much these days. There is a very nice cream binding around the edge of the body. One interesting thing that I noticed when I took it out of the bag for the first time was at the headstock. Now, I'm gonna flip it flat right there, and you can kind of see that that is a fairly straight string pull. Typically with other three-on-three -three headstock guitars, i.e. LP styles, you typically see a break angle that's quite extreme to the point where, I mean, those guitars have a very deserved reputation of breaking at the headstock. But I have a feeling because this is a, the wood is not so compromised right here, this, if it falls flat on the floor, and I'm not guaranteeing this by the way, but if it goes, we're probably not going to break this headstock just because the wood hasn't been too compromised and the straight string pull, the pressure is not sort of clamping down on this headstock and could give us some problems. As far as electronics and hardware go, we start with a pair of Seymour Duncan humbuckers, the Alnico Pro 2 set, a very nice choice for this semi-hollow body. We have a master volume, master tone, and a cool low profile three-way toggle switch getting you bridge middle position and neck position. What more could you want? The tuners on the headstock are Graftech ratio tuners. And I've played a few guitars with these particular tuners on them and I really like them. It essentially gives each string a set ratio of turns it takes in order to complete one revolution around the tuning post. Oh, and not to mention, they are locking. Easy tuning, easy string changes. What more could you want? And one thing I failed to mention is the tone 
is a push-pull pot, meaning that you can split the coils on the Seymour Duncan pickups. Pretty cool. One other cool accessory that you'll be able to partake in when you get your own television is that Warwick includes a set of their security strap locks. These are not just normal strap buttons. You do get strap locks with them when you buy it, which I think is pretty cool. I think it's about time we heard how this thing sounds. So this is how it's gonna go. We have the television going into a couple pedals on the floor, a Boss TU3 and a Keeley Aria for drive and compression needs, should we need them, and going into the front end of the orange rocker verb 100. In the effects loop, we have the Boss DC2W Dimension C for some nice shimmery chorus work, in the SDD320 mode and the new X Atlantic for verbs and delays. You're gonna be hearing the verb mostly throughout this video. That's the plate reverb. And when the echo comes in, I'll let you know. So let's do it, people. about these particular Seymour Duncan pickups paired with this guitar is that they have a little bit more treble than some of the pickups that I currently have from Seymour Duncan. And when it comes to semi-hollows, you get a little bit of a softening effect of the tone. Everything doesn't have quite the attack. So pairing some slightly trebly emphasized pickups with a softer guitar definitely makes for a nice winning combination. I find really that when it comes to clean stuff, the neck pickup in the middle position are what I prefer, but I'm telling you, man, this bridge pickup with the split coil is something pretty spectacular. I'm gonna add just a little bit of compression and uh, we're gonna fake our way through some chicken picking stuff. <laughs> probably a better bridge single coil tone than I've heard on a lot of bridge single coils, like actual bridge single coils. So it's a little scary if you ask me. Let's go to the middle position. Let's add a little bit of chorus to that from the Dimension C. And uh, we'll kind of do my normal clean thing. <laughs> clean tone to show you that I really enjoy before we move on to checking out dirty tones is another split coil sound and this time in the middle position. What I found with it is that this really has a great chime and shimmer to it, but sometimes that articulation can get in the way of stuff. On this particular sound, I really like it by just taking the tone knob, slowly rolling it back so it warms it up, softens those highs, and gives us something that's just a little bit better for strumming patterns. <laughs>
of great dirt tones to be found in these pickups, both full humbucker and split coil. And it's really amazing how quiet that the split humbuckers stay once we pull up on the tone knob. You know, I could just keep the same tone. And then the noise that we end up hearing, it's not amplified. It more kind of just shifts where exactly on the frequency spectrum that it is. See, and that's kind of cool. It doesn't add any extra noise. It just kind of changes where that noise exists. And hey, guitar is gonna have noise. It's just a fact of the matter. That's why there's noise gates. But hey, I got lights pointed at me. I got cameras and Pro Tools running. So there's a lot of electricity flowing around in this little room. But I just really enjoy the sound of it. And again, this is another thing about these pickups. A little bit more treble than I might want. So we can roll back the tone knob. I'm just gonna go for it so that the indicator dot is just pointing straight up at 12 noon. And I'm just gonna play around a bit and you guys can hear what that sounds like. And this is probably where I like it about 80% of the time that I'm playing on a dirt tone. <laughs> thing I got to admit in this video is that typically I don't like split humbuckers with dirt sounds. They just kind of lose all the body and just end up getting all of the bite. And I don't like that. I want my dirt tones to have some meat to them. But these particular pickups sound really nice split. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the neck pickup. We are going to keep it full brightness. We're going to split it and let's get a little bluesy and a little down and dirty. <laughs> say. One last thing before we wrap up is let's see how these pickups clean up with the sound that we have going on the rocker verb right now. <laughs> Now we could probably clean that up further by splitting the coil.
And that, my friends, is the television humbucker from Framus Guitars. Now, like I said at the top of the video, I was not very aware of what Framus could do in terms of guitars. They just didn't come to America all that often. But now that I know this company better than I did a couple years ago and I've started developing a relationship with them, I am very happy that I finally get to give these things a detailed once-over, and I am very, very pleased. Now, this particular guitar that we looked at is not a custom shop level, and it's not their D-series, which I believe is Chinese-made. This is essentially an instrument that you'd find from, say, like, Gibson USA level, Fender American level stuff, where it's built by an entire team in the factory. It's not one builder overseeing the construction, and it's not en masse in the Far East and in produced in large quantities. These are made to be the top of their manufacturing as a production guitar. And I gotta say, it shows. The body is incredibly lightweight and well-balanced for this kind of offset semi-hollow vibe. It sounds great. I think the pickups matching the softness of the hollow body are a great match. It is very comfortable, and I did not find myself adjusting as much to the 25 and a half inch scale with 22 frets. It felt very comfortable, felt very much like home. There's no sharp fret edges along this neck. There's no cosmetic flaws in the finish at all on any of the lacquer. Uh, I may have liked to have seen a little prettier of a, a maple top just because the pictures I've seen, there's some really gorgeous tops. But Warwick has a wood library that rivals probably the best American manufacturers, so I wouldn't be surprised if there were others out there with more ornate tops than this. But the finish is just flawless, and it stays in tune well. The locking tuners make tuning changes an absolute breeze. I'm having a lot of fun with it. I'm gonna hang on to it a little while longer before I send it back to Warwick and you might see it in a few videos coming up in the very near future. Now I'd like to know what you guys thought of the Framus television. Please let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. Click the subscribe button, turn on some notifications, and please do buy some merch with the holiday season coming up. Support the channel, support the band, support me so I can keep doing this for you. Thank you all so much for spending your time with me today, and until next time, my friends, I'm Sean Pierce Johnson, wishing you all out there great tone and happy stomping. Cheers.